Hello everyone, this is David Ottersveld with Week 19 Solution uh, for the Workout Wednesday Power BI Challenge. And in this week, uh, what I had done is I had created a small multiple series of line charts, and I wanted to highlight the minimum values and the maximum values. And this is something that uh, could be useful uh, in a variety of ways, and in particular, the technique that you can use here, depending on how you uh, use your DAX to create calculations for min-max, it can be extended and used in many different types of scenarios beyond just creating minimum and maximum markers. So there's a lot of creativity you could build into this uh, type of approach uh, with your own data, uh, with your own types of visualizations beyond just, let's let's look at min and max and different elements of conditional formatting could get you different colors for min and max and so on and so forth. There's a lot you could do with this, but uh, I'm just going to show you some basics about how I approach this and, and would love to see how people extend techniques like this uh, over time. So uh, s the requirements here, I'm going to use the basic financial data set that's built right into Power BI Desktop. We're going to create an explicit measure for sales, uh, and then we are going to use that measure in another measure, and that will conditionally return the result only if it's a minimum value or a maximum value. And then we'll use the sales measure in combination with this new min-max measure uh, to create this line chart up here. And then other things, uh, small multiples to, for the line chart, uh, appropriate formatting, so on and so forth. I'm not going to completely rebuild everything here, you know, the titles and text boxes and so on and so forth, but uh, I'll give you just enough to hopefully get the idea of, of how you'd maybe create something like this uh, within Power BI. So the first thing is get our uh, sample data set and uh, you'll notice it's right here on the uh, report canvas, try a sample data set. Uh, it's also up here if uh, you've already done something in Power BI Desktop, sometimes these uh, watermarks don't appear. So you can also come up here to examples and sample data set. Uh, there's just one right now that's built in. I hit load sample data and it finds my financials file and allows me to, to load this in. So I'll click on financials. Normally in a real scenario, I'd hit transform data, I'd open up Power Query, uh, but I'm just going to load the data as is. I'm not even going to add a date table this week. And that's one of the bonus things that uh, I added in the requirements. Like if you really want to go for it, add a date table. That's something that we uh, build in standard on, on most of our Power BI models. Uh, but just for a, a quick and dirty approach this week, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go with the, uh, the standard flat financials table. It's only like 700 and some records, um, exactly 700 records. So performance-wise, you know, you're, you're not going to get a big hit having a flattened table. Uh, but normally, date dimension from a star schema, all that good stuff, uh, would be something that you'd build into your, your Power BI model. Anyway, I'm going to create a measure here on sales. So the first requirement said I need to create a measure, and I'm going to add an explicit me measure for sum of sales. So sum, and then I can just start typing with my IntelliSense, find uh, sales, and I've already got my first requirement done. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. And in this case, uh, what I need to do is I'm going to add a, a measure that gives me a min-max highlight that references the sales measure that I just created. And there are many approaches that you could take with this. So the one I'm showing you here is not... Uh, the only one, and it might not even be, it's probably not the best one. So uh, beware, <laughs> you know, you'll probably see uh, a lot of other people with, with better solutions here. But uh, one of the things that I want to do is create a variable that just gauges what the, the maximum value is and the minimum value is. And to do this, uh, one approach uh, would be uh, looking at the minimum for all the sales in my date table. And so what I want to do is uh, not constrain it to the current context that I have uh, for dragging things into a line chart. You know, I'm going to be filtering based on the country. I'm going to be filtering based on the date, so on and so forth. I kind of want to ignore those filters and say, well, you know, for, for whatever my, my filter selections are, just, just give me that maximum value or minimum value. And to do this, I'm going to use the minx uh, 
function in DAX. And then I'm going to use something called all selected. And this is part of the all family of functions that uh, uh, you'll see or be exposed to in Power BI. Uh, and then I'm going to say all selected date. So regardless of date uh, selection, you know, we, we're going to be uh, considering our sales value. And I'm going to wrap this in a calculate and then reference sales. And here's my basic measure that gets me the max value. And uh, I'm going to quickly divert. Sorry, I forgot to return here. Uh, just from a, an intermediate standpoint, I'm going to return the max value, and then I'll come back to it. But I just want to show you what this looks like. Uh, if, if I have something like sales, and then I have something like my min-max highlight, you'll notice that there's some variation here. Let me increase the size, make it a little bit more readable. Uh, so I've got all sales, and then I've got this uh, different value for maximum sales, right? And, and what's going on there? Uh, but you can see here uh, the impact of the all selected, where I can drag in a field like date, and my min-max highlight uh, does not vary, whereas my sales measure will vary. And that's kind of the power and uh, some of the mystery of, of a function like all selected and just filter context and decks in general. Uh, so there's a lot of better teachers when it comes to uh, evaluation context and DAX, filter context. You know, what's the difference between filter context and row context? Uh, buy something, <laughs> uh, buy anything from SQL BI. This will be my plug for SQL BI and many, many great DAX teachers out there. There's tons of materials on uh, evaluation context with DAX and, and why some of these functions like all selected work the way they do. But uh, for my challenge this week, uh, I really just want to use it and uh, not go too deep for the solution video here. Uh, so I'm going to replicate this. I, I just realized as I, I typed this out, I had used uh, <laughs> min x when I had a max value. So I'm going to correct that. So I've got max value equals max x, and then min value equals min x. Uh, and then I return, instead of the max value, uh, a conditional statement that basically says, if it's one or the other, uh, I'm going to return that. And, and I think, once again, there's a lot of different variations to how you could approach this. Uh, you could use switch, which is what I'm going to do here. Uh, you could do nested ifs. You could you know, <laughs> do just a standard if, I guess. But, uh, you know, many, many different ways to, uh, to approach this problem here. So if the sales that's in context is the maximum value, return the maximum value. And if it's the minimum value, we'll return the minimum value. Otherwise, it defaults to blank. And in the switch function, uh, I could explicitly put in an alternative value, uh, but I don't need to do that here uh, as my last argument. So I will just end it. Uh, maybe I won't. So if, if you want to be explicit and put in something like a blank, just to show you, if you're not familiar with that, uh, there's this function in DAX called blank, and uh, that, that'll just explicitly return your blank for you. So we'll, we'll keep it at that. Uh, but now I've got a min-max highlight uh, that will vary quite a bit uh, depending on the context of the data. And you'll notice the, the value here uh, is showing blank for a certain set of dates because it's not the min or the maximum value. So I can see right away on this table that I'm going to uh, get rid of in a second uh, that it's working. Uh, so I've got a minimum and I've got a maximum. Great. Uh, I don't even need my line chart to show me that yet. All right. So let's remove this. Uh, let's swap in the line chart. All right. So let's see. Uh, part of the struggle here is I'm going to have to remember how I did this. Uh, so I drag date to access. And then uh, I'm going to drag sales onto values. And I'm going to drag my min-max highlight onto secondary values. And I get something that just does not make sense. All right, so I get this line from min to max. Not what I'm looking for, uh, but we'll, we'll change how that looks in a second. Uh, and then I've got small multiples here. If you're doing this with a version of Power BI Desktop that is prior to May of 2021, uh, this was a preview feature. So it had to be enabled in options and settings. Uh, if you're using May or later, uh, you'll see it just standard here, and I don't need to set it up. But I've got small multiples by country, so I'll drag in 
this, and uh, I'll, I'll format all this in a second, but I've got the basics of my line chart here. All right, so now it's uh, primarily formatting from here on out. And let's see, where we, should we start to tackle this? Why don't we uh, we'll format our small multiple layout here? So under grid layout, uh, I've got uh, two columns, but I need three rows. Uh, right now, there's no dynamic adjustment of my small multiples. So it's all this manual set, and it's got a maximum 6x6 six six grid. It doesn't adapt to your data. Uh, so hopefully that improves in the future. But uh, for right now, I know my data is not going to change with this static sample data set. So for this particular data set, it's not too big of a deal to say here's a, you know, a 3 by 2 grid. Uh, and, and we'll just leave it at that. So I've got my grid. And then uh, what I want to do, because I have my min-max highlight on my secondary axis, I have a secondary y-axis uh, option under formatting options, or format options. And what I want to do is uh, kind of scroll incessantly uh, looking for uh, the format option that I want. And I can never remember uh, where I need to go uh, for, for any of this, right? Uh, or I can come in here and I could search and I could just look for marker. And uh, this is something that is a little bit better for me because out of the dozens of options that I, uh, you know, I have, I struggle a lot with this accordion format option structure. Uh, and I just kind of forget where things are and every chart has different options. Uh, so search is best. Search is your friend. If you, if you can at least know what option you're, you're looking for and what it's called, you can search. And I can say something like show marker, right? And uh, here it's under shapes. And I, I kind of fudged a bit or forgot a bit because initially I'd expanded the secondary y-axis because intuitively that's where I wanted it to be. But it's not there. It's under shapes. All right. So I've got markers now on both of my series. I've got the main sales series, and then I've got the min-max series. And uh, what I wanted to do, if I, if I look back at the original visualization, the main sales series did not have markers. All right. So what I would need to do is kind of... Uh, I need to find it or know about it, but there's a customized series option or toggle. And I could say when I select that as on for my sales measure or my min max, I can vary how the appearance is. And so for sales, I can toggle the marker off. And now I have the marker on for only my min max, which is what I want. And then I can change my min max highlight. I think I had instead of a, a circle, I used a square, and maybe you increase the size a bit, um, so on and so forth. And you can kind of play around with that, play around with the color, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, the basic idea is, uh, you know, here's the formatting options. Go to town on, on how you want to approach it. But you can see uh, an almost there visual. The only thing I need to get rid of is the line uh, between. And uh, this is something where when I have my, my uh, line options, sorry, totally blanking on this again. My stroke uh, width will get me there. So I, uh, I decrease the stroke width to zero, and now I have just my markers like in my original visualization. And uh, <laughs> there we go. So once again, it's one of those things where there's many different ways to do it in, uh, in Power BI between the DAX calculations, the formatting, how you would approach the problem. But uh, you know, just kind of showing you a basic technique that hopefully you can extend across uh, your uh, Power BI solutions uh, and, and be pretty creative with it. Don't constrain yourself to just thinking min-max. You know, if you had just a certain data point you wanted to highlight uh, conditionally, you know, you could use this as, as kind of a foundation for that type of approach or that type of solution. So, uh, yeah, thanks for your time and uh, appreciate uh, you bearing with me. All right. Take care.